Back when I repasted my 7900 XTX, I was just aiming for slightly better temps on the stock cooler. Ever since then, I've been wanting to tear it down again, get some thermal putty on the power delivery, in hopes that it would give me even better results. This time around, I wanted to try out DeBauer's Thermal Grizzly Duranaut. I spent some time looking up the top performing paste on the market, and while it's not the most expensive, it consistently outperformed everything else. What I ended up doing was taking all of the thermal pads, putting them on parchment paper, and created a mold using hot glue. Once the glue cooled, I was able to peel out the pads, and now I had a perfect template for the thermal putty. While this method was way better than the old try and try again approach, uh, it still came with its own challenges. The main issue was that the thermal putty wasn't a solid piece like the pads, so getting out of the template was a little tricky. For the memory, I used the thermal paste spreader, kind of like a spatula, and it messed up the shape a little bit, but after some minor reshaping, it was totally fine. Keep in mind, it's going to squish out and reshape anyways once you get the cooler back on there. For the other pads, I ran a blade gently along the sides of the template to free the putty, cut away one of the sides, and slipped a blade underneath it so that way I could get it out of the template and then lay it down just like any other thermal pad. This worked perfectly because the amount of putty and the thickness matched the exact stock application, meaning no excessive squeeze out and perfect contact between the heatsink and all other components. The process was definitely tedious and a bit time consuming, but the end result was way better than trying to shape everything by hand and doing multiple test fits. I'm sure there are multiple other ways to do this, but for me, this worked perfect with zero test fitting. After all the thermal putty was in place, I applied the new thermal paste and ran a few benchmarks with breaks in between to allow the paste and putty a few thermal cycles. After 48 hours, I ran more benchmarks to compare against my control. Then I did some monitor gaming for some real world results. Thermal putty on the power delivery alone made a measurable difference, but here's where things got weird. Memory temps and core temps were barely any different, but the clock speeds in the average boost clock were anywhere from 100 to 120 ish megahertz higher than my initial repaste. That means we're getting better thermal transfer on the power delivery by lowering the temps enough for the core to pull a little bit more juice, letting it boost higher and more consistently. You'll see in an upcoming video how just some thermal paste and putty, plus this case mod got me nearly the same results as water cooling. So stay tuned and I'll catch you in the next one.